Hey, what's up everyone? It's Michael with Color Cubic, and I am back again with a new episode of Design with Purpose. So in this latest episode, what I wanted to do was revisit the previous basketball tutorials, which you can find here. The reason I wanted to revisit these tutorials is because in those tutorials, the end result, we kind of faked the results to get the basketball look and feel, right? What we ended up doing was we took two spheres, one with the hard surface modeled bump textures, and then the uh, this black sphere underneath, and then we applied an alpha channel to the texture of the hard surface model. And uh, the end result was essentially two objects. And although it looks good, if you wanted to apply any kind of physics or dynamics, you would run into a lot of intersectional problems. And so the only way to solve that is to create one object that ideally has a texture applied to it instead of hard surface modeling, and then another texture as an alpha channel. And so with uh, a, few, a few tries, I was finally able to find a solution that solves this problem. And so that's what we're gonna do today. Now, essentially where we're picking up is after the first tutorial video, but we are going to be utilizing the basketball line segments that we created in the first half of the second tutorial basketball video. So if you don't wanna go through that process, that's fine. In the description below, I've provided a link so you can download the basketball line segments. And I've also provided the displacement map texture that we're gonna create right now. So if you wanna skip this process and you just wanna get to the steps of applying the displacement map and the basketball line segments, you can skip ahead. For those who wanna follow along, which I would encourage because this actually has a lot of broader applications besides just making basketball textures. Uh, I would encourage you to follow along. Okay, so with all of that said, I am using Cinema 4D R19, and I will be creating this entire basketball series for this latest generation of Cinema 4D because I know the user interface isn't really consistent with this latest version and then previous versions. Uh, some things are the same, but some things have changed. Uh, Maxon moved a couple things around, so... Uh, that's just going to be something that I'm going to be doing moving forward is if I create a tutorial in older versions of Cinema 4D, I'll recreate that tutorial with updated steps to account for the new user interface in the latest iterations of Cinema 4D. Okay, so all of the disclaimers out of the way, let's jump into it. So what we have here selected is the subdivision surface hypernerb, and that's comprised of an editable sphere that has a bunch of extruded hexagons to make the bump effect that we want on the surface of our object. That sphere is then nested inside the subdivision surface hypernerb, which makes the bumps pretty smooth. So it makes a nice even application. And this sphere is actually made up of an icosahedron sphere with about 200 segments. And so uh, there was a few different things that we had to do to achieve these results. But again, if you refer to the first tutorial video for this basketball, we cover all of that there. Okay, so with the subdivision surface hypernerb selected, I'm going to hold down the command key if you're on a Mac, control key if you're on a PC. And with those keys held down, click and drag up to duplicate this hypernerb. Now we're gonna come back to our original hypernerb and I'm just gonna double click both of these radio buttons to keep it off the scene. So we're only working with the duplicate. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna right click the duplicate and come down to select children. I'm gonna right click again and come down to connect objects plus delete. Now this next step is important because what's happened is a UVW tag has been assigned to this editable object because this hyperderb has now been converted into an editable object. Now, normally you would keep this UVW tag, but I'm actually gonna delete this. And the reason why is because we're going to convert the hard surface modeled editable object that we have here into a displacement map texture. But if we want the baking process to go quickly, we need to replace the UVW tag. And you can do that by right-clicking this editable object, come down to UVW tag and set from projection. 
Okay, so now we have a new UVW tag assigned to this editable object. So we're all done with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our primitive object tab. I'm going to click and hold this and I'm going to select sphere. Now I'm just going to click and drag to adjust the hierarchy. You don't need to do this, but I'm just doing it for my own sake. With my sphere selected in the objects panel, I'm going to come down to the attributes tab of my sphere and in the object tab of my sphere, I'm going to increase the segments from 24 to 200. Next, what I want to do is change the type from standard to icosahedron. Again, if you remember in the first video of our basketball tutorial, the sphere we used, we converted it from a standard to an icosahedron. And this is an important step because it needs to follow the same map. And it'll make sense when we get to the baking process. So, okay, so with that done, I'm gonna come down here to create and I'm gonna click and hold this and select new material. And now I'm going to click and drag and drop this on our primitive sphere. Now with our primitive sphere selected in our objects panel, I'm going to press the C key on my keyboard and turn this into an editable object. And now with this editable sphere selected, I'm going to right click, come up to Cinema 4D tags, and then select Bake Texture. Okay, so what have we accomplished here? We converted our subdivision surface hypernerve into an editable object. We deleted that UVW tag and then assigned a new UVW tag to that subdivision surface hypernerve, which is now an editable object. Then we created a primitive sphere and then we changed that primitive sphere so it's now an editable sphere. It's an editable object. We assigned a bake texture tag to it we assigned a new texture tag material, and uh, we didn't replace the Fong or UVW tags on this one. We left those alone. Okay, so now with our baked texture tag selected on our editable sphere, I'm gonna come down to the attributes tab of our baked texture tag. And with the tag tab selected, make sure that the file name is empty. You don't need to fill this in. The format by default should be PSD, which stands for Photoshop document. Really the only two areas that we need to adjust are the width and height segments. I actually wanna make these so the texture is a 2K texture. So we're gonna change this from 256 to 2048. So 2048 for both the width and height segments. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna to come to options and with our options tab selected, we want to come down to displacement and check displacement. Next, I just want to click this little arrow so it reveals the displacement window. And in the, the displacement window, what I want to do is adjust the height dimensions. So I want to change this from zero centimeters to three centimeters. Next, what I want to do is I want to adjust the method and change this from RGB XYZ tangent to intensity centered. Next, what I want to do is check sub polygon displacement. And then I also want to check round geometry. And I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit. And I'm going to uncheck keep original edges. So everything here looks good. There's only one last step in the source field. Currently, it's empty. What we need to do is we need to come up to our editable subdivision surface hypernerve. Just click and hold and drag that into the source field. Okay, so now that we're done, we're going to do a quick preview. And that looks good. So next, what we're going to do is we're just going to bake this. And this is exactly what we want. So what's happened is it's finished the baking process and it showing us the results in the picture viewer. I'm actually going to come over here and I'm just going to change this to fit to screen. Now that baking process happened really quickly and the reason why is because when we converted the subdivision surface hypernerve into an editable object, remember we deleted the UVW tag and then replaced it. That's what's helping to speed up this baking process. If we left it alone, this baking process would take forever. So that's just a little trick that I stumbled upon and um, so far it seems to be working. So. Okay, so now in the picture viewer window, we want to come over here to file and save as. 
And what you see here is the depth channel. I'm going to change this from 8 bits to 32 bits. Everything else is fine, so I'm just going to click OK. And uh, I'm going to save this in uh, just the folder that I have where I've been testing this, this uh, tutorial. Um, you can save it wherever, just as long as you have access to it. So there we go. Now, like I said before, if you decide you don't want to go through this whole process and you'd rather just take the results that I have here and apply them, I have provided those files in the description below so you can access both the basketball line segments and this displacement texture that we just created. Okay, so now that that's all done, we can take this uh, subdivision surface object that's an editable object, click the two radio buttons to take that off the scene, and then take this editable sphere, click both of the radio buttons for that to take that off the scene as well. And, uh, you know, we just want a clear scene. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to my primitive object tab. I'm going to click and hold this, and I'm going to create a new sphere on the scene. Now there's just a couple things that we need to do before we apply the displacement texture. With our sphere selected in the objects panel, I'm going to come down here to the attributes tab of our sphere, and in the object tab, I'm going to adjust the segments from 24 to 100, and I'm also going to change the type again from standard to icosahedron. Next, I'm going to come over here to create. I'm going to click and hold this and select new material. Now with this new material, I'm going to double click this just to name it. I'm going to name it to basketball material. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to click and drag and drop this new material on the sphere. Now I'm going to double click this new material and in the color channel, I'm just going to adjust the color channel so it looks a little more orange. You can change it to whatever color you want. I'm just trying to make it a more conventional looking uh, basketball color. So, all right, now that that's done, I'm going to come over here to the basic tab and I'm going to come down to displacement and enable the displacement function. So now that the displacement function is enabled, you'll see the displacement tab. So select the displacement tab and then come down to these three dots. And this is where we're going to add this displacement material that we just created. So go ahead and find that and then click open. You can save it to the project path or not. I'm going to save it. So now that that's added, I'm just going to make a few adjustments here. First, I'm going to turn on sub polygon displacement. I'm not going to adjust anything else under sub polygon displacement. I'm just going to enable that. That looks good. What I do want to do though, is I want to change this, the height, from 5 centimeters to 0.5 centimeters. And then I want to adjust the strength. So instead of 100%, I want to make it 50%. Okay. All right, so we're almost done. Now what I want to do is I want to single click this material with our displacement texture added to it. And I just want to check seamless. And let me just do a quick check, make sure everything looks okay. That looks okay. All right. So with our primitive sphere selected, I'm going to come over here to our subdivision surface hypernerb. I'm going to hold down the alt option key on my keyboard and I'm going to select that so it nests our primitive sphere inside the subdivision surface hypernerb. Now with the subdivision surface hypernerb selected in our objects panel, I'm going to come down to the attributes tab and the object tab of the subdivision surface hypernerb. I'm going to change type from Catmull Clark Engons to Open Subdiv Loop. And then I want to adjust the subdivision editor and the subdivision renderer to one each. Now, in earlier versions of Cinema 4D, like R16, there is no Open Subdiv Loop, I believe. I think your options are Catmull Clark or Catmull Clark Engons. And so what I would do is I would change it to uh, Catmull Clark. But in later versions like R19 and later, uh, you have open subdiv loop, so select that. The results are just a little bit better. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and do a quick RAM preview, which you can achieve by pressing Command R if you're on a Mac, Control R if you're on a PC. 
and look at that. So what we have here is the displacement map for the bump, and that's being used as a texture on a primitive sphere. So this is exactly what we want. So now what we can do with one object is now we can apply an alpha channel to another object and it'll still be on one object instead of two. So we don't need to fake it like we did in the uh, second tutorial video. Okay, so now that we have this, let's come back down here to create. Let's click and hold this and let's select new material. I'm gonna click and drag and drop this on our primitive sphere which is nested inside our subdivision surface hibernerb. Now, this order hierarchy is important to recognize. We want this new material that we just created in front of this displacement texture. So uh, let's go ahead and double click this new material. I'm just gonna adjust the color channel so it's black. And then I'm gonna come over here to basic and I'm gonna come down here to alpha to enable the alpha channel. And now with the alpha channel enabled, on the alpha tab, I'm gonna come down here to these three little dots and I'm just gonna find where I saved the basketball line segments. I'm just gonna save that. Now, these results, we got similar results in the second tutorial video for this basketball series. And um, it's a really easy fix. So. With this basketball material selected, just click it once, come down to projection, and change this from UVW mapping to flat. And now, let's double click this black material with the alpha channel, and in the alpha channel, uncheck soft, and then check pre-multiplied. I'm just gonna orbit around this just to give you some perspective. Now, let's do a quick RAM preview and you can see the results. Now, if you're on a Mac, press Command R. If you're on a PC, Control R. And look at that. It's all one object. I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. Do another RAM preview. This is exactly what we want. And again, it's all one object, so you don't have to contend with having two objects to fake it. So, all right, that's the end of our tutorial. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to create a fourth video following this method, and I'm going to add dynamics to the basketball so you can see what it's like to add a bounce effect and, uh, you know, maybe when the basketball hits the ground, maybe it squishes a little bit. So I just feel like that would be fun and it would help round out this tutorial series. So uh, if you'd like to see that, just let me know, comment below in the comment section. But, you know, overall, if you found this tutorial helpful, uh, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in future videos, be sure to click that notification bell so you're notified once new content is added to the channel. But with all of that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.